and a fallen officer in crowd, quickly reaches under podium and gives him surprise. During his speech at the 36th Annual National Peace Officers Memorial Service, President Donald Trump honored the police officers of this country that had fallen in the line of the duty, as well as their families. And just to show you, by the way, how much I love our police, I said, oh, I'm going to need a hat because it's so windy today, Trump said in his remarks, holding up the hat. I said, when I got out of here, there's no way I'm going to put on this hat. So we'll leave off the hat. And this is for you, Micah. That's for our beautiful Micah down there. To every child in America who has lost a mom or a dad in the line of duty, I want you to know your parents are American heroes, American heroes, the president said. They died keeping us safe. They are the pride of our nation. And we will hold them in our hearts always and forever. Their sacrifice will never, ever be forgotten. Trump wins big Democrats miss something huge about special prosecutor Mueller that Trump loves. Democrats have been bragging about how they won big when Rod Rosenstein appointed special prosecutor Robert Mueller to the Russia election case. They have been acting like they beat Trump even though their claims are BS. Some of the more dishonest press were even saying the White House should panic because Mueller is so thorough. One thing they forgot, though. Robert Mueller is a lifelong Republican and a Marine. That is a great thing for President Trump since he has extremely close ties to the military and the Marines specifically. Oh, and let's also not forget that there has still been zero evidence presented to this day that Donald Trump colluded with Russia at all. The burden of evidence is on the accuser, not the accused. So, before the Democrats go celebrating their big victory just yet, I think it's important we help them get all the facts straight. What they are really doing is trying to rile up their base before the 2018 elections for Congress. We cannot let them take the House or Senate back. That's why we gotta share this out all over the place and get every Republican out there to the polls. 2016 was just the beginning. Trump wins right after Comey's secret letter was leaked, Trump just fired back with his secret weapon. These last few days have been very tough on President Donald Trump. The media has been working overtime to try and spin a nothing into something and get him impeached. Today, a new memo allegedly from James Comey's dinner with President Trump was leaked to the press by FBI agents. According to the memo, Trump asked former director Comey to drop the investigation into Michael Flynn and Russia. In theory, this could be a smoking gun to impeach Trump on obstruction of justice. If it were the truth, Donald Trump decided to set the record straight by releasing his own official statement. The president has the utmost respect for our law enforcement agencies and all investigations. This is not a truthful or accurate portrayal of the conversation between the president and Mr. Comey. That's right. Trump's secret weapon is the truth. And to prove their point even more, acting FBI Director Andrew McCabe testified just last week to Congress that, there has been no effort to impede our investigation to date. The sad part here is that the New York Times, who concocted these allegations, admitted that they never actually saw the memo that they were writing about. They claimed it was unclassified, but they still only got word of mouth confirmation from an unnamed source. Look, if these claims were true, it would be a big deal. However, this is the United States of America where we believe you are innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. With no hard evidence, like this handwritten memo from James Comey for instance, there is no case here. We gotta share this out before the media's brainwashing of the American people is complete. This MSNBC host went off script and admitted the truth that no Trump hater wants to admit. Mark my words, this one is going to go down in the record books as one of the days that shaped the entire Trump presidency and society around it. We all know the liberal mindset, don't have conversations, yell your own opinion so it looks like you're winning an argument, be intolerant of people who think differently than you, and shun everyone who does and call them all racists and bigots. That's the dangerous, echo chamber, groupthink that is tearing this country apart. But today, 
the liberal media has seen how far up their own ass they've gotten. Joe Scarborough, on his show Morning Joe, cited a New York Times article calling out all of liberal culture for being intolerant and dismissive. This is absolutely epic. This is 100% correct. The liberal garbage that has taken over college campuses to the point where conservative students are shunned by the student body and the college itself must stop and this is the first step in making that a reality. Stop the intolerance towards Christians and conservatives, engage us in conversation, debate us, and maybe we'll all learn something. Shouting and calling us all racists only makes you look foolish and stupid. Toby Keith risks his entire career to say this for Trump, do you support him? In the liberal entertainment industry, it's considered a risk to one's career to align with Donald Trump in any way. That's why country music star Toby Keith's recent announcement came as such a welcome surprise. Western journalism reported that Keith just announced that he will be joining Trump on his upcoming visit to Saudi Arabia. Keith will be performing on Saturday for a male-only audience in Riyadh during Trump's two-day visit. Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir and Fox News host Brett Baer will also be joining Trump for the visit. The latter will be speaking at the event Keith is set to perform at. The next day, Trump and over 50 Arab and Muslim leaders will attend a banquet to be hosted by King Salman, and Trump will give a speech. Salman has said that he hopes to use the banquet to forge a new partnership in the war against extremism. Saudi Arabia is delighted at being the number one stop for Trump's visit, delighted by the re-emergence of a strong diplomatic relationship with the United States and delighted by the opportunity to show off Saudi leadership of the Arab and the Muslim world by getting everybody to turn up in Riyadh for multiple, overlapping summits, said Simon Henderson. The Washington Institute's director of the Gulf and Energy Policy. Trump did what hasn't been done in seven years. When Barack Obama was in office, he opened our borders and let in immigrants, welcoming them with promises of homes, jobs, food, and medical care all at the taxpayers' expense. Now that Donald Trump is in charge, it is all changing for the better. ICE is coming down hard on illegals and is succeeding in their endeavor to break up MS-13, one of America's most heinous gangs. Illegal immigrants on our southwestern border, caught by Border Patrol, has decreased by 40 percent since Trump took control. In April, the United States Coast Guard reported that they did not intercept one, single, Cuban trying to enter the United States. Not one. This is the first time in seven years we can feel confident and safe. The Daily Caller reported that the Coast Guard would normally catch 5,150 Cubans trying to come into the country by sea at this time of year, but that number is zero. In an interview with The Wall Street Journal, Coast Guard Commander Admiral Paul Zukunft said, the number of Cubans fleeing the island nation actually increased after Obama announced in 2014 that he was restoring relations between the United States and Cuba. The Coast Guard caught 5,496 Cubans trying to enter the country by sea, and more than 56,000 Cubans attempting other ways in 2016. Zukunft acknowledges the decline in Cubans attempting to enter the United States was partially, if not mostly, because of Trump's border crackdown. President Trump has rolled up the welcome mat. We will not welcome illegal and dangerous immigrants into our country. We refuse to pay for their education, health care and living expenses. This is a new Trump just gave Schumer, Pelosi and Waters a brutal surprise. President Trump took to Twitter Wednesday night proving the tremendous hypocrisy the Democrats have displayed with their comical outrage over his firing of James Comey as director of the FBI. Trump posted a video with a compilation of high-ranking Democrats bashing Comey for his handling of Hillary Clinton private server investigation. Democrats, who not long ago demanded the ousting of Comey from his position with the FBI, are now apoplectic over Trump actually doing just that. After conferring with the Justice Department, President Trump fired Comey Tuesday. Referring to the Comey dismissal as a cover-up, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, D.N.Y., 
has now accused Trump of attempting to derail the FBI's investigation into the alleged Russian interference in the 2016 election and the conspiracy theory that Trump somehow colluded with the Russians prior to the November election. It seems like only yesterday that Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Maxine Waters, and others were virtually calling for Comey's scalp. In November, Schumer said, referring to Comey, I do not have confidence in him any longer adding that he found Comey's conduct appalling. Compare those statements with what he is saying now. In his press conference Tuesday, Schumer said he informed the president that in firing Comey, Trump was making a big mistake. House Representative Nancy Pelosi, D. California, was another Comey hater. Last fall she stated, referring to Comey, that maybe he's not right for the job. But that was then, this is now. This week Pelosi issued a written statement in which she stated, The president's sudden and brazen firing of the FBI director raises the ghost of some of the worst executive branch abuses. Speaking to the media in January, House Representative Maxine Waters, D. California, angrily said that James Comey FBI has no credibility. In a televised interview on NBC this week, she said it was terrible that Donald Trump fired Comey yet that she would have fully supported Hillary Clinton doing the same thing if she had won the presidency.